During the Caribou Gold Rush, a ship with hundreds of miners from San Francisco arrived in Victoria. One had smallpox. It takes 12 days to get symptoms and become infectious. The trip took four days. He shared a room with others who also got sick. Dozens of settlers and Southern First Nations would die, but Northerners would be devastated. The Hudson Bay Company had governed the coast and Governor James Douglas had quarantined ships and inoculated indigenous people in previous outbreaks. But settlers petitioned London to end company government and make the governor accountable to an elected assembly. Douglas announced to the House that smallpox had arrived and strongly recommended instant measures be adopted. The assembly refused to reinstate quarantine. Douglas called a meeting of 30 native leaders to warn them. With their approval, Dr. John Helmkin vaccinated 500. All local Songhees people removed to an island to wait out the epidemic. They and the Esquimalt would be largely unscathed. Douglas had Helmkin send vaccine around the province to a company official in Kamloops, Royal Navy surgeon on the HMS Hecate, a missionary in Nanaimo, a priest who visited dozens of Fraser Valley communities, vaccinating thousands. Douglas reimbursed a doctor who spent a month inoculating along the Fraser and Nicola rivers. Southern First Nations avoided the worst, but the North was a catastrophe. Douglas had an Aboriginal wife and children, but anti-company settlers spread rumors Douglas would infect them with blankets. Smallpox is an airborne disease spread mostly through breath. It dies quickly outside the body, especially in high humidity. In Victoria's climate, most smallpox viruses would die in 24 hours. Louis Pasteur was still researching his germ theory of disease. Doctors believed smallpox was caused by bad air. People would not knowingly handle blankets surrounded by infected air. Decades earlier, smallpox had devastated the southern Hualmach people, but spared the north. The northern Lequiltok raided weakened communities every summer, killing the men, taking women and children as slaves, trading them for guns with tribes in the maritime fur trade. Some villages abandoned the coast. With the establishment of Fort Langley, Hualmach tribes finally obtained their own guns. In 1840, a coalition of Southerners prepared an ambush. Warriors dressed as women canoers lured an armada of Northern raiders in Maple Bay. After the massacre, large-scale raids ended, but hostility remained. After the establishment of Victoria, large numbers of Northerners camped there every summer for work and trade. There were numerous conflicts with Southerners with dozens killed. Douglas had Northerners towed past Nanaimo to avoid violence. Newspaper editor Amor de Cosmos often demanded Douglas evict the Northerners. Anti-Douglas elected politicians also wanted the local Songhees evicted. Douglas refused to move them, citing faith of a solemn engagement to protect them and benefits to native people. They were incensed that the unelected Douglas should stand in the way of the racist majority and petitioned London to remove him. After smallpox arrived, the body of a white settler washed ashore. The northerners buried him, but smallpox took hold in the camp. Reverend Garrett and his assistant were the only settlers to give aid to the northerners' camp, caring for the sick, burying the dead. Garrett lamented that they refused, with few exceptions, to be vaccinated. James Douglas reported to London that some native tribes would not resort to the preventive measures recommended to them. There were other factors. The practice of living communally in close quarters facilitated infection. Traditional medicine men gathered people around a sick person. Touching spread infection. The traditional sweat bath, followed by a cold water plunge, hastened death for the weakened. 
A De Cosmos editorial attacked the governor for endangering settlers' lives by letting the camp stay. Later that day, while Douglas was in New Westminster, the police evicted the northerners and towed them to the ocean. As they canoed home, many became sick. Some were killed by tribes as revenge for past raids. When they reached their homes, they infected others, creating cascades of misery and death. In Haida oral history, elders claimed Douglas had initially tried to save lives by towing them home before they were infected, but they cut the ropes and returned. One chief committed to raising a pole to Douglas, saying, he's the best Iron Man I ever met. Public demands to better manage crises led Douglas to incorporate the city of Victoria later that year. The 1862 smallpox epidemic killed some settlers and Southern indigenous people, but devastated Northern First Nations. <laughs>